Chibi Ayoba. As they are coming forward, let's listen to the following written in testimony. Praise God. I am a first timer. I got my healing during yesterday's Sunday service at Goshen. I was healed when the bishop called out the first timers and asked us to take our own anointing oil in front of the altar. And right there, the moving object that has been troubling me in my stomach suddenly disappeared. Miracles are real. God is great. From Simon G.A. Please come forward quickly your name and what the Almighty God has done in your life. Double portion. My name is uh, Elder Mechibi Ayuba. After the trumpet service in the morning, in the afternoon, I was going to the town with my car. Unfortunately, unfortunately for me, that uh, God safeguarded me because of this uh, church. God helped me. I was using my seat belt. With, I just saw the light, a fire coming from the bonnet of the car. In fact, at that moment, everything got burnt. Call for uh, the, the service men came, and then they have to quench the, the fire. I was the only person inside the car, and my life was saved. I want to appreciate God for what He has done for me. Hallelujah! Your divine protection is assured in the mighty name of Jesus. Double portion. My name is Fakon Lumu Yua. I was used to use these times to thank my God for what he's done for me. I used to do some some years ago, but I entered this service, I entered this church as at March of this year. I give thanks to my God for what he's done for me. Last week, I entered this altar. I asked my God to do to pay one credit that I hold. I don't have anything, I don't have any hope to pay that credit because I don't have enough money for my hand. So this week, I thank God he has paid the credit for me on a miracle way. Then, I was used to drink before. I see some challenges to make me drink, but I thank God I don't drink again. So that's the reason why I'm thankful. Hallelujah! Delivered from charm making and alcoholism. Give the Lord a clap of rain. Let's listen to the following written in testimony. Say, I want to give glory to God Almighty for deliverance from food addiction. I was a person that when I eat even as much food as of almost three people, I don't still get satisfied. To the extent that when I wake up at 1 a.m., I still feel very hungry, as if I haven't eaten anything. On the day of communion service, I prayed and fasted, and I want to give God the glory who has delivered me from it during my Wolf April special edition in LFC Kubwa. After our pastor shared testimony of how God has done his own and the eating habit has stopped, now I eat normally. To God be the glory. The God we serve is the doer of all these things. Lift up your hands and begin to give in thanks. Father, we thank you. You are mighty in our midst. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the thanksgiving. When planted and watered grows to be great You can be anything you want You can 
can achieve all your dreams if you only believe. The word of God is here today and it's working inside of you. Would you believe it? Dare to receive. Maybe discouraged, it will come to pass. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be strong, be encouraged. It's only for a while, 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 while. You may have been down, maybe discouraged. It will come to pass. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Say, I'm strong. I'm bold. It's my time to shine, 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 shine. Hallelujah. The word of God is here today. And it's working inside of you. Say, I believe it. I receive in a world where the seasons and times lift up your head. This is your season. It's time to shine again. In a world. Shine again. It's time to shine again. Shine again. This is your 
Hallelujah. Clap is for Jesus. Will you do it better? Do it stronger. He's worthy of our praise. Come on, make it louder to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. To be able to see a new day, a new month, is a gift from God. For we lay down, we slept, and we woke up because he sustained us. You may be able to buy drugs to sleep, but there is no drug for waking up. So if you woke up, it is the Lord that tapped you up. He's the one that made you alive. He's the one who made you strong. Hallelujah. And uh, this God does not require anything from us other than just praising him. And according to scriptures, let everything that hath breath, everything that hath breath. Is there someone with breath this morning? He said, let everyone that hath breath praise the Lord. If you truly had breath this morning, what is required of that breath is to praise the Lord. Therefore, lift up your hands. Thank Him for waking you up this morning, for making you see another month. The past seven months, He sustained you, He kept you, He provided for you, He protected you. Come on, give Him all the glory due to Him. Give him all the glory to do to him. Give all the glory to him. Come on, give him the glory. Give him the glory. Thank him for your life. Thank him for your family. Thank him for keeping you alive and well and strong. Father, I give you the glory. I bless your name, Lord. I bless your name, Lord. I bless your name, Lord. I rejoice in you. I lift you on high. No one like you. No one like you. No one like you. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. To God alone be the glory forever. The Lord who has kept you more than seven months since the year commenced will keep you supernaturally this month. Also, as a church, we want to thank him for the fulfillment of prophecies in our midst. He said it with his mouth and performed it with his hand. We cannot but return to give him the glory. The first Sunday this year, our attendance was 19,000. Amen. But as at last... 19,220 to be very precise, but as at last Sunday, to the glory of his name, he increased us to 34,488. He is the one who has spoken, he is the one who has performed it. That is an increase of 79% close to 80% to the glory and praise of his name. According 
to Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 37, he said, I will yet increase them. I will yet increase them as men, with men as flock. He has increased us with flock of people. A number of the people are here this morning whom God has added. I will increase them with men like a flock. What we have experienced is like a flock. In our cell fellowship, God increased us tremendously. The first fellowship in January was 9,117. By last Saturday, before yesterday, the 27th, he had increased us to 19,047. Amen. That brought us to increase of 108% increase, close to 109 increase, all to the glory and praise of his name. I'd like us one more time to thank him from the depth of our heart. And if I may request you, as we are thanking him, we'll be on our knees. Everyone who believes that he's not bigger than God will be on our knees and we just thank him and glorify him. Come on, everybody, let's praise him for increasing us with men as folk. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for the increases you give to us. It is not the doing of any man. It is your doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. It is not a result of expertise. It is not a result of wisdom. It is not a result of skills. It is your doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. It is your doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. We bless your name, Lord. We exalt you, our King, from the depth of our heart. Paul plants Apollo's water. Only God gives the increase. Thank you for 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 the increase. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he has done unto the Lord. Be the glory. Great things he has done unto the Lord. Be the glory. Great things he has done unto the Lord. Be the glory. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great thing he has done unto the Lord. Be the glory. Great thing he has done. Great thing he has done. Great thing he will do. Give him thanks. 
give him praise hallelujah glory lever 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 la ba sha ta la ba la ba ga ga glory lever ya da ka ta na da la ba sha sha la ba ga ga and lever lever ya na mo no lo ba lever ya ta ka ta na ma za 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 ara mo ro lo ba lever 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 si ki ga ga ba ra ba la thank you lord Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Father, we are grateful to you. If there is anything good that we have seen, that is done, it is you. You and only you. It is not human expertise. It is not human drive. It is not human wisdom. It is not human effort. You and only you. And only you. And only you. Be all the glory, all the honor, all the thanks goes to you Lord for lives transformed for destinies restored we thank you in the name of Jesus blessed be your name Lord in Jesus wonderful name we have given thanks amen come on give God a big hand it's worthy of our praise hallelujah Amen. Oh yes, he answers prayer. He answers. Oh yes, he answers prayer. Oh, the God I serve. If you don't have a copy, please raise your hand up. If you don't have a copy, ushers, please, can you quickly go around and uh, let those who don't have yet quickly have some. Please keep your hand up. If you have yours, don't raise your hand yet. 
so as not to confuse it with those who need it. You don't have a copy, please raise your hand. They quickly reach out to you. In case they are not able to reach out to you, you just use your heart for this morning to pray. I'm sure you'll get a copy of yours. And I'd like to ask you, whatever you have written in your card, make a copy of it on another paper and drop it in the ark of testimony. The prophetic instruction we have received as winners family is that within 21 days of this month, beginning from last Friday, the God of sudden visitation will visit you according to your heart's desire. Don't be in a hurry. In case you have not written yours, don't be in a hurry. The range is 21 days. And God is never late. I'd like you to be sure what you are written is what you cannot forget. Don't be casual about anything you are doing. You feel free to bring it in the course of the week. If yours is not fully ready now, or you wait after the first service, write it before you leave the church premises so you can drop it. But don't be in a hurry. I'd like you to be conscious of the request you are making because within 21 days from that last Friday, God will visit you suddenly. God answers prayer. God answers prayer. God answers prayer in his house. He said, the house of the Lord shall be called the house of prayer. The house of prayer. You are in the house of prayer. According to Isaiah chapter 56, verses 7 and 8, you read there, he said, the house of the Lord shall be called the house of prayer unto all nations. Unto all nations. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people, including you. All people. So whatever prayer is made in the house of the Lord has an endorsement of answer. This morning, my God will answer you speedily. This morning, my God will answer you speedily. There are individuals amongst us. Before you get back home from the service this morning, the answer will be waiting for you. Suddenly, in the course of this week, answers will be slapping you on your right and your left. Whatever will hinder your answer within these 21 days, God will crush them in the name of Jesus. Now, lift up your card, lift up your voice and speak to God right now. He is your father. Talk to him according to your heart's desire. Never mind who is next to you. Talk to him freely. Talk to him loudly. Talk to him quietly as you may desire. You want to talk to him quietly? You want to talk to him loudly? He is your father. You are in your father's house. You are in the house of prayer. You are in the house of prayer. Pour out your soul before the Lord. Pour out your soul before the Lord. Pour out your soul before the Lord. He's hearing you right now. Call unto me in the day of trouble and I will answer you. The righteous cry and the Lord had him and delivered him from all his trouble. Engage your heart in speaking to him right now. Speak to him from the bottom of your heart concerning your marital destiny, concerning your fruitfulness, concerning your promotion, concerning that open door. Speak to him. He's hearing you right now. Speak to him. He's answering you right now. Speak to him. Call upon him concerning your health, concerning your children, concerning your grandchildren, concerning your parents. Speak to him. 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 Right now. My God.
the God of this commission, the God of my father, Edible, is hearing you right now. He's hearing you right now. He's answering you right now. He's hearing you right now. He's answering you right now. He's hearing you right now. He's hearing you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 102, verse 2. In the day that I call, answer me speedily. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. May this scripture be fulfilled in your life today. May there be no further delay in that answer in the name of Jesus. Many have wondered concerning you asking questions. Did he not say God will give him double portion? Where is the double portion now? As a matter of fact, this has suffering reduction. Every tongue that has mocked prophecy in your life will come to rejoice you this month in the name of Jesus. I decree that by reason of your cry in prayer this morning, your shame and reproach shall be turned into glory and dignity. When we are doing thanksgiving at the close of this month, every issue you have listed here will have been accomplished in the name of Jesus. Whatever time your request comes into this act of testimony, I decree a conversion of your trials into testimonies in the name of Jesus. The God of my Father, Oh, yet they go answer you speedily in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. And all of you who believe, say the loudest amen. Give God a big shout. As you shout one more time, Every barrier on the way to your answer will crumble. Give God a big shout! Big shout! Big shout! Big shout! Big Please be seated. Hallelujah. Somebody says, you see, what I don't like about that church is that they shout. <laughs> what you don't like about us is what God likes about us. Because when we shout, it goes up with a shout. It goes up. When we shout, it goes up. When praise is on, God is up. When praise is down, God is seated. You can't be praising God and God remains seated. When you are praying, he's permitted to sit. But when you praise, he's not permitted to sit. He stands up. And that makes quick delivery of your answers. Before you reach home today, some of you seated here will have your answers waiting for you. You are arriving at your place of work and business tomorrow. The answer is waiting for you. In the precious name of Jesus. Don't forget... 
to document those things you have written in the prayer card. The prayer card should be for you. Make a copy of it, either photocopy or you write it afresh with your hand and you drop it in the Ark of Testimony. If you can do it today, why not? If you cannot do it today, you do it in the course of the week. We have that long period. But the earlier you do it, the better so that the engine inside the ark can start working on your own. It's a converter. There is a converter here. A spiritual converter inside this ark. Anything that enters into it is converted into answers which will be fully delivered to you. Those who believe they are receiving their delivery are saying a loud amen. Please welcome your neighbors to your right to your left, wishing him or her the best of God this month Say to that person, this is your season of sudden visitation. It's your season of sudden visitation. Say it to somebody, prophesy it upon him. Prophesy it upon that person. Prophesy it upon that person. Prophesy it, prophesy it. And it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. Before we receive God's word this morning, I want to again Thank God for every one of you, members of this assembly, true winners indeed, who have been all out winning souls. Real winners are soul winners. Real winners. If you are not winning soul, your winning status is questionable. Real winners are soul winners. That's your proof beginning from january particularly in the last seven weeks of season of in gathering and i pray from the depth of my heart as the privileged pastor over this assembly that my god will reward you mightily please let me hear your loud prophetic response a laborer is worthy of his wages my God, whom you have served with all of your heart, will reward you in the name of Jesus. As you receive this blessing, please note that there is a reward and there is full reward. You receive reward for winning the souls, but you receive full reward for establishing the souls. There is child birth and there is child care. When a man is saved, he is born into the kingdom, but he has to be catered for, he has to be cared for, and nobody cares for a child more than the one who gave birth to the child. Therefore, all of the souls that God has given to you, please follow them up, ensure that they are established in the faith. Ensure that they are established in the faith, taking them to the Cell Fellowship, the Winner Satellite Fellowship, getting them into the Believers Foundation class, getting them into the church on service days, and getting them to attend the Bible school, and what more, getting them entrenched in the church service unit. Let them be a part, full-fledged, of what is happening. Shout hallelujah. One of my converts, an elderly man, which I showed to you, some of you here in one of the services, is fully attended Bible school with his family. Another one that God saved from weeks back has opened cell fellowship in his house. Let's get them fully entrenched. The joy of a mother is that the child is delivered, but the pride is that the child is growing. Nobody wants to give birth to a child that is not growing. So patiently, keep nursing them. Keep nursing them. Give them the water of the word. Give them the milk of the word. And gradually you make them grow into receiving the bread and the meat of the word of God. Remember, it is a cause for you to gather and not to eat. What do I mean by that? Your full blessing is in seeing these souls established. Seeing these souls established. Two days ago, I received a text from one of my old converts, way back from my degree. He said, this is your son speaking. What a joy. It was my joy. After 
close to 20 years, 17 years to be very specific, to see these souls establish, establish in the Lord. My God will establish the souls saved through you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And as that happens, you have been receiving rewards, but you shall receive full rewards in the name of Jesus. Yeah. All of you who believe in that say the loudest, Amen. And as you are doing that, you are still winning more souls. I'm sure by now, a lot of you are already, you're already soaked in soul winning. You can't stop it again. So keep at it. Keep winning the souls. Keep reaching out to them. Keep establishing them. And God will keep them strong in the name of Jesus. By the grace of God, as my, at, at my last count, by the help of God, God has established close to 25 of my own personal new converts in the church establish grand death in the faith they don't need to be persuaded to come to church again church has entered into them church has entered into them they have become like david who said i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord two three sundays ago one of them came i saw him after the third service i said what's happening he said i've been here since the first service first service second service third service i attended he he has become church addict i saw him holding some cds in his hand i said what is this he said i just bought them he said, that's what I keep listening to every day. I just bought them. I keep listening to them. May God establish every soul that is saved through you like this in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lift up your hand again. I decree that you will not miss your reward. Yeah. I decree that spiritually your hands will not these little young ones in the faith in the name of Jesus. Yeah. With your hands still lifted, speak to God. Lord, speak to me this morning. Speak to me this morning. Establish my ways this morning shout hallelujah in jesus precious name we are praying season of sudden visitation is our theme for the month every visitation calls for sensitivity spiritual sensitivity is number one qualifier for sudden visitation spiritual sensitivity Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, I was in the spirit on the lost day and I heard the sound of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, verse 11. I was in the spirit and I heard the sound. It was so clear like a trumpet. You see, when you are sensitive, you enjoy clarity. When you are sensitive, you enjoy clarity. When you are sensitive, you enjoy clarity. When you are spiritually set, you can capture the things of the spirit well. Then Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, he said, again, I had the voice said to me, come up either, come up either, come up either, come up either, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And in verse 2, he said, then I was in the spirit. Immediately, I was in the spirit. Immediately, I was in the spirit. Immediately, I was in the spirit. And behold, the throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Sensitivity determines clarity. You must be sensitive in the spirit. Don't be casual. Let things pass you by. Opportunities come to all, but only very few are ready for it. Only the prepared can capture the opportunity. Only the prepared can capture the opportunity. You have to get set. Only a set hunter can succeed in catching the game. There is no casual hunter. Every hunter is set for the prey to pass by. You cannot catch it if you are not set for it. I'd like to ask you, therefore, to abandon every kind of carnality. Somebody greeting you in the church, somebody doesn't greet you, what is your business? You didn't come to church to be greeted. 
Somebody asks you to sit down there and you like to sit down there. What is your business with that? They want you to sit down there. Sit down there. Maybe that's where God wants to meet you. They say park this way. And you say, I want to park that way. Park where they say you should park. Don't allow anything to roughen your spirit. Be sensitive. In order for you to enjoy clarity. Be sensitive in order for you to enjoy clarity. The good news is that this month you shall be suddenly visited. What is the good news for you this month? I want to hear you say it very well. Say it personally to yourself. My God will visit you as you have declared it. In the precious name of Jesus. Give God a big hand, everybody. Our series of teaching every Sunday is walking in financial fortune. Walking in financial fortune. Every dryness around your life financially has finally ended. Your hand will no longer be empty. Your pocket will no longer be empty. Your hand will not touch the bottom of your pocket again. Flour shall not be wasted in your storehouse. Oil will not finish in your house. Your era of begging and borrowing has finally come to an end. Please take this word not as the word of man, but as the word of God. I say to you again, the era of begging and borrowing has finally come to an end in your life. Now you see, we are dealing this month with very fundamental issue of life. Because if you take censor of people's prayer and intercession, a larger percentage of it has to do with material well-being. That's why God also acknowledged and said, I, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in hell. Because the, what every man needs above any other thing is prosperity. I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. That you may prosper. Number one on the agenda of people's request is material well-being. And then secondly, physical well-being. If you get these two, you have some degree of rest. And God is saying this man, you will not only prosper, but you will step into financial fortune. <laughs> And that will happen as a sudden visitation in the name of Jesus. You see, there is something about God and the human system. The human system follows natural sequence. Follows natural sequence. Sequence of time. But God bridges the gap of time. Himself is time. God does not walk by time himself is time he can adjust time forward and backward he can adjust time forward and backward in your favor this month god will adjust the time forward for you that's why he said when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream we were like them that dream god will turn your situation favorably like a dream of the night in the name of Jesus. Very shortly you will become an object of argument. <laughs> Some will say he's not the one. Others will say he's the one now. He's not the one. He's not the one. He's the one. He's not the one. He's the one. Hallelujah! And all you just do is to walk by them, leave them to be arguing. Those who say you are the one, they are right. Those who say you are not the one, they are right. 
and then as you are going you'll be doling good things to them uh, take bread take this take this and take this and take this your story must change in the name of jesus hallelujah your story must change your story must change there was a brother whom God blessed when he came to church with a new car. And the car was parked in front of his house. And the children of the neighbor came to his house. And they saw a new car out there in front of the house. So they got back home and told their father that ah, it's like uh, God has blessed our neighbor with a new car. The father said, it's not true. Where will he get it from? It's not true. Where will he get it from? It's not true. First day the car was there, second day the car was there, one week the car was there, two weeks the car was there, he changed his mind. He said maybe it's a visitor that brought the car. Uh -uh. The visitor there for one week, for two weeks, the car is still there. He changed his mind. People will change their perspective about you. You that is being harassed by landlord, very shortly, you will invite the landlord to the opening of your houses. There are individuals that cannot pay their rent now. Very shortly, you will open your own estate. In the name of Jesus. In the year 1989, our church was being harassed by a woman who was landlord of the land we were using. Two plots, two plots of land in Angwarimi, Kaduna. Two plots of land. She was boasting, she was fuming. Get out, leave this place. Now we are blessed with acreages of land. On this compound alone, we have nothing less than 750 acres of land. Go to Canaan City in our international headquarters not only in this country but outside the country in one of the west african countries we have a, a property of 1000 plus plot of land i mean acres of land over 1000 in a foreign country paid for full paid for very shortly you will be walking in front of your own houses <laughs> suddenly Solomon found himself in the world of fortune. Suddenly, Abraham found himself in the world of fortune. Very soon, it will be your turn in Jesus' name. <laughs> now, financial fortune is a reality. The e economic instability of the world notwithstanding. Financial fortune in this kingdom simply means wealth whose source is not traceable to human effort. Heaven made wealth. And you know, anything that comes from heaven is above all. Heaven made wealth. Anything from heaven is error-free, corruption-free. Heaven made wealth. There are people who are made by the world economic system. And there are those who are made by God. There are riches of men and there is the blessing of God. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and hardeth no sorrow. What is the difference between riches and blessing? Simple. The blessing of the Lord simply means riches without sorrow. Riches without sorrow. Riches that is void of sorrow. Having it and having it peacefully. Having it and having it quietly. Having it and having it sweat free. That is the blessing of the Lord. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord. Make it rich and make it to sleep. It has no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord. Make it rich and make it rest. You have rest that comes with it. When it is from God, it is kept by God. It is anxiety free. If it is God who gave it to you, God will keep it for you. Any riches you have that you can't sleep is not from God. 
It's not from God. Abraham was a non-entity. So much a non-entity that when he left his community, nobody followed him or looked for him. The only person that followed him was his wife and his nephew, Lot, whose father had died. When Abraham was going, they donated Lot to go with him. That led the two of them, but they have been a concern because Abraham has been living in his father's house. At that old age, he was living in his father's house at 75. If somebody who has lived in his father's house for 75 years says he's living, won't you let him go? In fact, after he's gone, you will sweep the ground with, his, with your broom. You will sweep his leg away from the house. He left in chapter 12 of Genesis, in chapter 13, verse 2. Abraham had become rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Genesis 13, 2. Abraham had become rich in silver, in cattle, and in gold. Abraham had become very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Now listen to this. God's blessings are definable. He has, they are definable. He had become rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Within one chapter. Then before he died, in chapter 24, Verse 1, Abraham was well stricken in age and had become rich in all things. The Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. The Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. The same way the God of this commission will bless you in all things. It is the will of God that you should abound in all good things. That you should abound. You should have in excess. I am come that they may have life and they have it in excess. They have it to the overflow. They have it to a point that they can distribute it. You are not a blessed man until you become a distributor. You are a rich man for having something, but you are a blessed man for distributing something. A blessed man is a distributor. So if you don't have it to a point that you can distribute it, you are not a blessed man. Hallelujah. Isaac was so rich, he became a threat to the whole nation. Genesis chapter 26 from verses 12 to 14. And Isaac sowed in the land. And in the same year, the Lord blessed him hundredfold. And the man Isaac had was strong and he went forward and he became very great and the Philistines began to envy him for he had possession of cattle. He had possession. He had possession of cattle. He had possession. He was so blessed that he had a store of servants. He had a store of servants. Servants in reserve. He had excess of hands to service his needs. It's important, however, everybody to understand that there is one platform that God uses to bless his people. That platform is called the covenant. Say with me, covenant. I want to hear you say it again. Say it one more time. Covenant is the platform for God's blessing upon his people. The covenant. Now, In Genesis chapter 17, after the Lord had brought out Abraham, he said to him in verse 1 down to verse 2, when he was 99 years old, the Lord said to him, I am the almighty God. Say with me, almighty God. Amen. Abraham, you are a small man, or at best you are a mighty man, but I am the almighty. Walk before me and be thou perfect you know we're talking about walking in financial fortune the root of it is a covenant walk before me and be thou perfect verse 2 
and as you do so or in the process I will make my covenant between me and thee and the token of the covenant or at the peak of the covenant I will multiply you exceedingly I will make you walk in financial fortune so the covenant is the platform for financial fortune now what is the covenant a covenant on a general note and as we integrate it to the lesson today can be defined as a deal enacted by God based on well defined terms based on well defined terms that is this is your portion this is my portion this is what I will do this is what you will do an agreement but the agreement is now sealed with an oath an oath means a swearing a swearing and what makes it bounding is the swearing the oath which puts your life at a stake what does that mean it simply means that by covenant with God you become one with God you become one with God by covenant with God you become bound and God becomes bound that's why when God effected the covenant with Abraham the name was changed God became God of Abraham and Abraham became Abraham of God in Genesis chapter 14 when the angel came when when Melchizedek came he addressed Abraham as Abraham of God Abraham of God Abraham and God had become one what does that mean whatever affected God affected Abraham whatever affected Abraham affected God that's why when God came to Abraham and said Abraham give me your son Abraham said I am under a host he is not just my son he is your son so take him on the other hand when a king came and took Abraham's wife Abraham went to sleep because he understood that Sarah was not his wife Sarah was God's wife and God stepped in the Almighty into the house of the mighty king appeared to him in a dream of the night and said Abimelech you are a dead man that woman you took is not just Abraham's wife is a prophet's wife and that prophet is my prophet that prophet is my friend you took my wife's friend that's why the covenant represents friendship with God it represents friendship with God and that is the peak of relationship the peak of relationship is friendship friendship that's why culturally speaking in some quarters it is still respected today and I pray you have such friends in your life it is being respected to today when a man has a situation in his family maybe he has crisis with his wife the question that is being asked is who is his friend who can we call to talk to him and they call his friend and his friend says give me the phone hello how are you doing today is it true that you drove out your wife John, you see you know okay bring her back to the house I'm coming bring her back to the house and based on friendship the man answers if it were not for you if it were not for you if it were not for you I will bring her in and when the friend comes in I say what's happening now he said no it's all over since you spoke it's all over that is why when God said he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah Abraham the friend of God came and said God sit down here let's talk 
Did I hear you want to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? God said, well, that's what I'm thinking, but I need your view. And Abraham said, well, the issue is, first of all, you know you are a righteous God. You won't destroy the wicked with the righteous. Is that so? He said, yes, that's true. Okay, what if we find 50 people there? He said, no, my friend has spoken. What about uh, 30? No. The angels were already set to destroy him. He said, why is God changing his mind? He changed his mind because his friend was talking to him. He changed his mind because his friend was talking. You need to get to a level of friendship with God. When children cry to their father, the father may not answer them. But when a friend talks to him, there are many of you that you know what I'm talking about. When you have a problem with your father, what do you do? You go and look for his friend. You go and look for his friend. You, you loiter around the friend's house. And the friend says, ah, come here, what's happening? What are you looking for? He said, daddy that drove me out. Your daddy drove you out? Come, enter my car, let's go. <laughs> and then when he hears that you are coming, they have opened the door. Because a friend, a friend came. The covenant brings you into friendship with God. That's why you must strive to become a friend of God. Not just a child of God, become a friend of God. And that is what the covenant represents. Shout hallelujah. That's why today you can find people who have grown into friendship with God who are, they are talking to God on advisory note. I mean, it's their privilege of God, but the covenant brought them to that level. They are talking to God on advisory note. They are not begging God. They are speaking with God. They are relating with God. You will get there. If you check the scriptures very well, God is ever mindful of the covenant. God is guided by the covenant. God cannot forget the covenant. Psalm 105 verse 8. Psalm 105 verse 8. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to the thousand generation. Covenant stands into generation. That's why when a man is in covenant with God, the effect of the covenant exceeds his lifespan. The covenant God made with Abraham extended to Isaac, to Jacob, and then to Joseph, and then to the whole of Israel. The covenant God made with David extended beyond David. It went to Solomon. It went to all. God said the throne will not depart from Judah as a result of the covenant. That's why you must live your life well. Because you are not living to yourself. You are living to the generation to come. You know why my children cannot be, cannot, cannot be blessed? I have established a covenant with God on their behalf. Till Jesus come, my family is settled in the covenant. Just like occultic people, charm makers, they donate their children into the occult even before they are born. I have donated my own before they were born into Christ. So they have, my children don't know how to do any other thing but to serve God. They don't know, they don't know how to do it. I have initiated them into the covenant. The covenant has generational effect. Generational effect. Psalm 111 verse 5. He is ever mindful of the covenant. Psalm 111 verse 5. He had given meat unto them that fear him. He will be ever, he will ever be mindful of his covenant. Shout hallelujah. What is important to know, however, as we begin to round up, that prosperity, abundance, material, is the token of the covenant. Even in the human system, to prove that you have a covenant with someone, there must be a gift from you. There must be a token from you. To prove that Abraham was in a covenant with God, God demanded for him to sacrifice Isaac. It was a test of his faith in the covenant. Now, we are coming to something there. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, he said, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he which giveth thee power to get wealth. Power to get wealth. For what reason? 
that he may establish his covenant which is swear unto your fathers so without wealth covenant is not fully defined the ultimate definition and clarity and evidence of the covenant is prosperity wealth so when we talk about wealth we are not talking about just a desire to possess things materially we are talking about a result of the covenant that we have made with God. now listen to me I don't desire to be rich I am bound to be rich how because of the covenant the only way God wants to prove to the world that I have a covenant with him is the wealth God presents us as a show peace to the world to give an evidence that we have a covenant with him it is God's pride it is God's exhibition of abundance to show to people that we are connected to him that we are connected with him so that when we stand in the plane it is not just you standing you are standing on the behalf of God that is the whole essence of the covenant so if you are poor you are not representing God and for that reason I bind and I cause to the root every trace of poverty in your life those of you who believe say the loudest amen you will not beg again you will not borrow again now the summary of the covenant is in deuteronomy chapter 28 it shall come to pass if you hearken diligently to the voice of the lord your god that he will make you to go high above all the nations of the heart and he will make these blessings to come upon you and the, the, the you know the blessings will overtake you and among other things it shall be the head and not the tail should be above only and not beneath you will lend always and not borrow and all of that is that god will open this treasure and pour you out blessing upon you and upon your family your very physical involvement in making the covenant to come to pass is your giving 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 sacrifice constitutes the anchor of our covenant with god sacrifice giving if you are not a giver you will die a pauper god required that abraham should give anybody who does not encourage you to give has destined you and has tied you down to poverty you see <laughs> in the natural you shouldn't ask a poor man to give but in this kingdom the cure for poverty is given the cure, the poorer you are the more you should give give your way out of poverty give your way out of poverty you have to forcefully give your way out of poverty i had one pair of shoe 1988 one pair of shoe i was so blessed that i couldn't buy new shoes for my marriage the shoe was open but in the midst of that nothing will stop me from giving get crazy given get crazy a widow was about to die how should you ask a widow to give want to be called a fake prophet this woman said this is the last flower i have i want to bake it so that my son and i will eat and die and Elijah said, you don't have to eat and die. Give and live. Give and live. And the woman believed, just like many of you believe what I'm saying this morning. 
and they gave it out. And from that moment, three square meals for 365 days, nobody knew the source. From today, nobody will be able to identify your source of blessing. <laughs> Giving to a point of sacrifice. Psalm 50, verse 5. Psalm 50, verse 5. He said, come, gather my sins together unto me. Those who have made a covenant with me, how? By sacrifice. A covenant with me by sacrifice. Sacrifice means giving to a point of blood. Painful as blood. You give to a point as if somebody is cutting blood out of your body. And that's what the covenant is. The covenant means cutting. Cutting of blood. That's why they talk about cutting a covenant. Giving what is painful for the sake of friendship. Giving what is costly for the sake of friendship. Giving what is painful. You don't tell me that Abraham didn't have pain giving Isaac. He gave what was painful for the sake of friendship. He gave what was painful for the sake of friendship. He gave what was painful for the sake of friendship. And Abraham became a friend to God. Hallelujah. And by that reason, Abraham didn't need to apply for anything. Abraham just went and took what he wanted. You see, we have lost the real meaning of friendship. It's not like today. Today, you can be traveling and tell your friend, please watch over my family. Within one week, you will enter the bed with your wife. Friendship means look after my things. And whatever you think is right, in good conscience, do with it. That's friendship. God could say to Abraham, I need your son. And Abraham said, why not? He's not my son, he's your son. And so everything Abraham needed, he could take, he could take. His son name became God, Abraham, God. The first name of God became Abraham, God. It was as deep as that. But all of it established by a sacrifice. So what are we saying? For you to enjoy the blessing of Abraham this way, you have to be a practitioner like Abraham. You have to be a practitioner. Do the works of Abraham to enjoy the blessing of Abraham. Do the work of Abraham. Abraham was a generous man. Abraham would sit in front of his house and give food and water to passerbys in front of his house. The question is this morning, has anybody ever woken up in your house before? Has anybody, has anybody ever entered your house and spent a night there? You are always complaining. Things are tight. I have only one room. I have only two rooms. I can't accommodate anybody. Even your father and your mother can't come to visit you. Your in-law can't come to visit you. I don't know what kind of house. That is not house. It is prison. You must be a practitioner. Let them that be rich among you. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 16 and 17. Let them that are rich among you not be proud about their riches. Let them know that they should not be high-minded, not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. And in verse 18, he said, they must be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. You know what I said earlier? The only way to prove your blessing is that you are a distributor. You are a communicator. You are rich in good works, rich in good works, rich in good works. You will surely get there. Yeah. Well, as we close, if you are not born again, you are not yet in the covenant. Only those who are born again, only those who are in Christ are privilege to connect 
with the blessing of Abraham. Salvation brings you into the order of Abrahamic blessing. Salvation brings you into the order of Abrahamic blessing. Galatians chapter 4, verses 28 and 29. That is what happens when you are born again. You are brought into the covenant of Abraham. You are brought into the covenant of Abraham. You are brought into the covenant of Abraham. Now, we brethren, as Isaac was, are children of the promise. When you become a child of God, you become a child of promise. When you become a child of God, you become a child of promise. When you become a child of God, you become a child of promise. Shout hallelujah. So may poverty no more. So may poverty no more. If you are here this morning, you know you have not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Why don't you do that? Sin is a polluter. Sin is the root of poverty. You can be free from it. You can come out of it. You have somebody's testimony this morning. When I gave my life to Jesus, all the money I was spending for charm, no more. For 16 years, for 16 years, he was consulting with champs and champ makers, heavily drinking. But when Jesus saved them, something happened to him. A lot of people like that with great transformation in their life, this morning you can become one of them. Wherever you are seated, please stand to your feet as you give your life to Jesus. Come on, wherever you are, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to see my life change. I want to encounter transformation. Stand to your feet. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. More people are standing up. Church, give your hand to Jesus. It's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Somebody is wondering, you see, I'm not a drunkard. I don't smoke. I don't uh, do charm. Uh, what do I need it for? All men who are born into this world are condemned by reason of the sin of Adam. No one can stand righteous before God without Christ. That's the reason why you need to make that decision. If you are here before, now you have given your life to Jesus, but you backslid it and you want to be restored back to your first love in Jesus, why don't you also stand up? Or maybe you are like that person, you gave your life to Christ, but you are still dealing in charms, dealing in something, some alcohol here and there, and you want to be properly grounded in the faith. Stand to your feet as well. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet now. By the authority in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the deceiver from your life. It's a new day for you. Now, all of you who stood up, Carry your Bible and whatever you come to church with and come to the altar here quickly, right now. Come to the altar here right now and give your life to Jesus. All of you who are making that decision, carry your Bible, your bag, whatever you came to church with and march on here quickly. March on here quickly. Clap your hands for them, church, as they come. What a day. What a blessing. What a day. What a blessing. If you're coming, hasten your step down here. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, very important, this is the most voluminous title that is from this commission through the hand of God's servant on prosperity. Very comprehensive. Winning the war against poverty. Some of you will need to really fight poverty out of your life. Get this book, Breaking Financial Hardship. It may not take you more than one week to read this book and be free eternally from poverty. The covenant well, the hidden covenant of blessing. Get these books and they will be a great blessing to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. But we pray right now. If someone is still seated, you know you have not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Why must you remain seated when others have left you behind? Why must you remain seated? Don't let the devil punish you one more day. Some persons will need to stand up now and run down here if you are the one. I release you by the authority in the name of Jesus. Come on here quickly. Come on here quickly. Come on here quickly. Clap your hand for Jesus Church. More people are coming up. Now all of you in front here, please bow your heads in prayer. All of you in front here, stop the writing right now. Stop writing. You will do the writing later. Bow your heads in prayer. Bow your heads in prayer. Lift up your right hand and pray this prayer with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Raise your hand, all of you in front here. Say with me, Lord Jesus. I come to you. Your hand will not be begging or borrowing hand. This week, all you lay your hands on to do shall prosper. 
this week all pregnant women due for delivery will carry their babies with their hands this week every stranger that comes your way shall fall before you by the blessing of God upon this commission I pronounce you all blessed in the name of Jesus this ministry is not only blessed but has become a blessing it has become an institution of blessing I'm standing there for right now as a part of this institution of blessing to declare God's blessing upon your life in the name of Jesus by this blessing every trace of curses over your life is hereby destroyed for all of our first time worshipers I decree that whatever is your heart's desire as you are standing before this altar right now jump upon you in the name of Jesus I call you blessed you have come to associate with a blessed place I decree that upon your departure from here the blessing around this altar go with you in the name of Jesus so shall it be in Jesus wonderful name may I once again welcome all of you who are out here at the altar into God's presence we love you and we know you have been blessed already have you been blessed are you sure you are blessed well this is the way it is in all of our services I like to encourage you therefore that don't just be a visitor in this place become a member of this family come into the future services establish yourself in this place which is ordained of God and you will never regret doing so you are blessed in Jesus name